Welcome back, everybody, to the Fighting for Freedom podcast. I just want to say thank you to everybody for all your love and support. You guys have helped this channel grow dramatically. If you could please, at this time, drop us a like, comment, subscribe, share our podcast, turn on those bell notifications, and leave us a rating and good review. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Fighting for freedom, one podcast at a time. God, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome to another episode of the pod. I was just laughing because I was talking about how my guest Nick here has. What do you call that thing? What is that thing? So I haven't is quite it a named her. Oh yeah, it's it's a it's a type of a goatee. I don't know what type, but it's it's starting to do something. I think I've been working on it for oh my God. I don't know, about a year or so, and it just. You know, it goes longer, but it don't fill in any beard oil, beard butter, you know, the different techniques that they try. None of it's working. It's about yeah, to get shaved off. I was going to say, it definitely looks Asian. And you said you sh- you trimmed a little bit and cleaned it up just to be on this pod. So I, well, yeah, I do, I do I was, appreciate that, but I can't tell. So I was going to, you know, full shower, you know, wipe my face down because I got grease or dust or whatever it might be from work. But mm-hmm. I was going to try to make myself look presentable just for you, Vinny but I didn't quite make it that far today. I appreciate it, and everybody else listening and watching definitely appreciates it. <laughs> no, it's all good, man. You're a working man. Uh, from from day one, I assume you've been a working man, right? So let's let's get to day one. Anyway, we Nick, talk- thank, thank you for coming out, bro. Thank you for, you know, thank you for doing all this. I, I really do appreciate it. It's nice to hear, you know, I've known you for, like, almost – four years like in person but then to the day since the day i met you now you know what i mean so it, oh yeah I, I don't know your full story i know your day to day and i know you like nicotine and caffeine and that's pretty much it <laughs> you gotta have multiple <laughs> options for the for them too yeah, you, know? you gotta have multiple options so but, t- tell me about like day day one phase one like where where is nick gould from so, born and raised Midwest Iowa, pretty much smack that middle of Iowa. There ain't really a whole lot around here besides tweakers and cornfields and rednecks, which, you know, it's a it's a whole vibe. I never thought I would miss it until I, you know, couldn't come home whenever I wanted to. And just somewhere along the way, it just kind of triggered, like, hey, I miss those fucking tweakers. You know what I mean? It just, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's daily entertainment. You'd get them in California when we're out there too. I remember seeing one drop her pants right there on the road, leaving base <laughs> right at the intersection. And the cop came over, escorted her off, was just having a conversation with her as I drove past. It was the greatest. It reminded me of home. <laughs> it reminded you of home. It reminded so, me of home. So why did you re- why did you leave home to begin with? Why did you join the military in the first place? So I had always had, like, I don't know, there was something telling me, like, I need to do more with my life. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not comfortable or satisfied with where I was. Back mm-hmm. then, you know, I was doing some shady stuff for some money, working odds and ends jobs. I bounced between actual jobs, and nothing was really working out for me. I was getting by, but I wasn't content. I wasn't happy at all. And yeah. I had some family drama going on, and... You know, the whole situation just had me thinking, like, hey, I need to get out of here now before I end up not being able to leave the country, period. Like, it was, there were some dark times back there, and I'm glad I left. Not once will I ever regret that. Yeah, the the military can definitely help with certain situations like that. You know, we all have those friends, like, when we were younger, or, like, when you first joined the Navy, right? You you hear from like your friends back home and you're like, dude, this kid is still like working Craigslist jobs and he's still getting into trouble. If you were like, bro, like I know this sounds like a shitty fucking idea. And I know like you would have to like quit doing what you do on the regular, but bro, consider the military because they pay you. They'll literally give you a whole 180 on life because that's it. Like they own you. You're, you're there. You do what they say and you go where they, where they tell you to go. There's a lot of yeah, people just, in the world that I, that probably need that, you know, like that slap, slap by reality. 
but oh yeah we, we all have our different reasons it definitely i expected you know some brutalness and yeah. it caught me off guard but not in the ways i was expecting i get to boot camp you know you get there that first night you're on the buses it's dark or whatever and as soon as those bus lights start start turning on you got you know dozen people yelling at you you're like dude what did i even do like i didn't do anything i'm just right here <laughs> yeah. and then they, that yeah. one person with a cell phone they're just like charging after them. i'm like hey turn that off now it it set a different tone about two weeks into it i was in a push division so the first like week and a half i was there during p days the longest p days ever by the way um, um we did yeah. absolutely nothing not a single thing we studied and all that stuff but never actually did anything. And then once it actually started, and I'm like, okay, you know, this ain't that bad. The people next to me were getting beat all the time, but I just kept my, you know, mouth shut, nose down, did what I was told. And they didn't know my name until about two weeks before we graduated. Oh, you were one of those quiet kids. Absolutely. I know yeah. when to keep my mouth shut and when I should speak <laughs> up. And that came in very handy. Yeah, very, uh, very uh, big advice for those who... Uh, I already signed the dotted line or think about signing the dotted line. When you get to boot camp, the people who make it through the smoothest and the easiest are the people who just shut up, keep their head down and do what they're told. Yeah. Oh, we, we without had, a doubt. We had people like that where like the RDCs or like drill instructors would be like, what the fuck is your name? Who the fuck are you? And I'm like, that's Campbell, dude. He's been here for like six weeks. <laughs> like, shut the fuck up, Harry. I'm like, all right, my bad, you know. <laughs> I was one of those dudes that, you know, the first day there, they were just like, say something again? And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like they, they heard the accent, and that's it. Now it's over. Oh, yeah. Now, Game yeah, now, over at that point. Now I'm targeted, yeah. They knew I was an older guy. You know, I had tattoos going in, too. So they were just like, all right, we got one of these, right? Let's fuck with them. But they made me the laundry PO. That was kind of like the like the give and take. You know, I got to work in the laundry room. So it was like it was like a hustle, like a scheme. I was running out of there. And they knew it. They they know how it all goes down. So they oh, were yeah. like, of course, we got the Italian running a mob store in the, in the laundry room. But if he gets in trouble, then they, they will kick him out. So it was good times. It was good times. See, I had it even better. I was the male PO, man. You, the, I mean, oh, yeah, you, you were the, oh, dude, that's oh, yeah. a good job. That's a good man, game. And I was, you know, we were getting packages and everybody would be like, hey, man, you know, my mom's supposed to be sending me cookies. Like, don't let anybody know. Be like, all right, man. But I'm eating half of them before you even see them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was a man of my word. That is one thing I've always been proud of is I'm a man of my word. If I tell you I'm going to eat half your mom's cookies, guess what I'm going to do? <laughs> I mean, I'm going to yeah, eat half your mom's, mom's cookies. There was dudes who got to like take out the garbage too. That must have been a fun job, just because like you get to leave. I did that a couple times, and yeah. let me tell you, I about got asthma. I go yeah. out there because the smoke pit's right out there too, or you know wherever the uh, civilian employees want to smoke. I walk out there one night. It was right right before taps. Took the trash out. You know, I knew my chief was going to be gone already. It was just one of our first classes. It was super chill, and. uh I'm out there dropping the trash like a good little, good little sailor, right? Yeah. There's a man over there that was working like the kitchen or something. I was like, hey, you smoke? I was like, well, I can't do anything. I'm in boot camp. Like, what do you expect? Yeah. Like, How about this? I'm going to leave a pack of cigarettes and a lighter right next to these stairs. Oh. Whenever you want some, you just go for it. When I tell you that I about sat down and took the whole pack, it... it I wanted to so bad, but I knew with cigarettes and as cold as it was, I definitely would have just been reeking of smoke by the time I went hey, back I, in. I just, yeah, how, how do you go back in just smelling like a like a like a pack of cigarettes? Dude? They'd be like, right. Come well, on. unless you got a really <laughs> cool laundry PO, you know, they could probably help you out. I got you, bro. I'll put extra Tide Pods in that thing for you. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so so boot camp was kind of a breeze for you, right? You have any uh like memorable moments? We all have those one like that one story where we're just like, yeah, you'll never believe what this kid fucking did. <laughs> so we had um a guy that had some cookies, right? Shoved in the uh -huh. VCR, 
because oh, nobody dude, uses yo, the VCR yo, the, the v, no, 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 everybody knows about the VCR, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every... yeah. Man, I knew this kid had been stashing for weeks. I think we were like week six. <laughs> and this kid had been stashing, so he had probably a couple dozen cookies in that VCR. Mm-hmm. We always use DVDs. You know, who would look in the VCR for food or any type of contraband, right? Perfect spot. Yeah. Not so much. The DVD yeah. player stopped working. So then they uh, go and grab a VHS tape. And my, my first class, actually, I think he knew something was going on with the VCR. Because he walks in with an actual VHS tape. Rubbing it down the side of his cheek. Like that, right? Yeah. Just looking around, seeing who's getting nervous. And boy, when he made eye contact with this kid, it just... Yeah. <laughs> Lost yeah. it. He he knew he was about to get messed up one way or another. His punishment was to eat all the cook. Oh damn, we 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 had a we had a dude who um it was I, I think it, nah you're good I think it was our yeoman wait uh, no so so then go back so, so, what were you gonna say his punishment was to what oh. oh so his punishment was to eat all of them and so he did. He ate all of them, and he thought that was it. He had to stand in front of everybody and eat the eat the eat the contraband, right? Well, then he got beat for forty five minutes straight. Yeah, those cookies came well, right up. Well, all of us <laughs> were just sitting there watching. Man, let me tell you, those those cookies look good going down, but not so much when they were back <laughs> up on the floor. Yeah, I bet that poor kid slept like a baby, though, dude. <laughs> oh yeah, he all wasn't right, so- a small kid by any means. No, well, I mean, he was stashing cookies in a VCR. Like, what? What makes you think he's, you know, a, a normal size? I guess you could say. I mean, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> so you you get out of boot camp, right? And you have the job you want, right? Like, you're you were a BU, correct? So eventually, I turned out to BU, but not originally. Well, so what would you what you going as? I was originally going through as a nuke. What? So really? Yeah. Yeah, Damn, I don't like. I didn't really like go around like, hey man, like I was almost a nuke. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know, but I mean, some people that you know from battalion that actually hung out with me and everything. You know, they knew I was pretty wise as far as books go and good scores and all that. But man, the nuke life, fuck that. Like so I, what, what what happened with it? So I, to sum it up, I'm a very positive being right like i always try to find a silver lining in a shitty situation Mm -hmm. there were days that i would wake up i lived off base you know i had a house off base with my wife and kid at the time and i would have to drive in for pt at you know zero five but the curfew was 4 30 so i had that 30 minute window where there was no you know i had to leave right then to get there by that time to muster up and get in formation for the runs or whatever it was. Um, it got to the point where one morning I was on my way to work and there was this bridge that overlooked another, you know, interstate that flew through Charleston right there on my way. This close, man, this close to just seeing if my car would ramp it or go through that retaining wall. That was kind of one of the first signs I was like, okay, you know, I'm, that's not me. I need to figure out something. And eventually I ended up dropping out of it. And when they were like, hey, we got to bill it open for a BU. I was like, what the hell is a BU? Yeah. Like, I, you know, I didn't know anything about the CBs at the time. And I was like, she's like, well, they do construction and they carry guns. And I was like, well, sounds right up my alley. Sign me up. When do I leave? She's like, well, we can have you out next week. And I was like, cool. So yeah. I went over to Mississippi, did that little pipeline for a while, mm-hmm. and ended up choosing uh, West Coast. Went out to California for a few years, but it seems like I spent more time in Japan than I did in California. <laughs> yeah, well, that's crazy. You actually got your pick, dude. I they you know like they give you like your wish list, and they're like, "What do you want to go?" Yeah. And you're like, "You're like I don't fucking like, uh, East Coast," and they're like, "Oh, what's your second choice?" Like, overseas and like what's your third choice and like well i guess west coast it's all we it's all available and they're like all right great you're on the west coast like, well, why'd you why'd you ask me to pick <laughs> you know 
Well, that's, that's great. That's, that's how the Navy works, though. Hey, what yeah. do you want to do? Because we're going to make sure we give you the exact opposite. Yeah, but you know what? Low-key, I'm kind of glad because West Coast BH is, like, living lavishly, like a millionaire. And the East Coast BH is, like, a Waffle House diet. So I'm, I'm low-key I'm low glad they sent me over there. Because, you know, you have to go through the pipe, like, the, the shorter pipeline right after A school, and you go yeah. to Mississippi. And I was I was there for, like, you know, a month because I got there on like a Friday or Saturday and I clashed up Monday. So they put me right in. But for every weekend, you know, we, we went to, there was the CB ball one weekend. That was, that was crazy. We, we, we almost got kicked out for shotgunning Red Bulls and we ended up was at, that the, uh, go ahead. What? Was that the 75th CB anniversary or the 75th ball? No, the 79th. <laughs> oh, man, you are. No, man. actually, no, 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 no. This, this is 2021. I'm lying. Say, I'm lying. That's from this, Battalion, was in 20, this was in 2018. So, okay, quick so man. you were still with It probably no, would have no, been no, 77. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 77th so, anniversary. Yeah, that, that was a wild one. We, uh, Me and my buddy were, we do something called Y-bombs. Like, they're famous in Florida, where you take a Red Bull can and you pop it open like you get a shotgun it. But you fill it with vodka, like the rest of like the air that's in it. You just fill it with vodka, and then you shock on the whole thing. Like three minutes into the CB ball, me and my buddy are pounding them. We made it, we made <laughs> we made it to dinner, and I, I handed the the lady like one of the waitresses like fifty bucks, and that lady brought us like seventeen steaks, and me E three and all my other E three buddies are sitting there with all this food and all this alcohol everywhere. Eventually, someone came up to us, and they were like, you fucking serious? I'm like, yeah, dude, we're in the fucking Navy. Like, this is what we do, you know? So we were like, you know what? Screw this. We left, and then we ended up going to uh, go ride go-karts. That was fun. We were hammered riding go-karts. Then we went across the street to a strip club. And in order to get into the strip club, there was no cover charge, but you had to buy a beer. And I was like, so let me get this straight. I got to buy a beer to get in? And they're like, yeah. I was like, all right, what do you have? And they're like, Budweiser. And I was like, what else you got? They're like, Budweiser. And I was like, all right, I guess I'll take a fucking Budweiser. And this right. dude reaches into a cooler and pulls out a Budweiser from the cooler and hands it to me. I'm like, where the hell am I? And then he goes, you could pick a song if you want. And I was like, pick a song? Dude, they have an, they have an iPad. And you scroll on the iPad and pick a song. And then, like, the dancers come out. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Where was this, and does it still exist? I have no clue, dude. Anybody who was with me, my boy, my boy Denick, he was he was stationed at one thirty three. He's out now, but I, it was me, him, and then two of our other friends went, dude. It was it was a hell of a time. Then we went to you know New Orleans and Pensacola. That's that's that other place. Yeah, Pensacola, right around there. We had we had some good times. We had some good times. Hell yeah. You were there for a while. Did you get to enjoy it, or they were just like, nah, lockdown? You talking which area, in, in, like which in, location? In Gulfport. Gulfport. So I was actually there for, you know, the A school plus mm -hmm. ECS, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. My first night there, so I drove from Charleston, South Carolina, over to Gulfport. Just did a one-day one little trip on it, but I had a late start. So I didn't get there till you know, 22, 30. 23 ish mm -hmm. and i found three gates man <laughs> all of them were closed i'm driving around my phone's about to die like trying to gps it but the gps is taking me the opposite way over towards like some casino so i finally ended up getting no. on the base and i'm like hey where do i go to check in for you know builder a school they're like i don't know and i'm like well you are great at your job mr Sentry guy <laughs> yeah uh, Ended up finding it and everything, get checked in, but it was a process. By the time I found out where I was supposed to go, I was already ready for bed. Yeah. But staying there for a while, I spent a decent amount of time there. You find all the little small spots. Like, yep. I'm sure you probably went to Shaggy's a time or two. Yep. Over yep. there. Go, that, it, you know, that there, one there was is, that one place, uh, the wing place, Murky Waters. That place was yep, fine. Murky Waters. They had some damn good burgers, too. Yeah, good burgers, good wings, yep. good beer. Oh, it's cold. Those are the <laughs> those are the two places I would definitely stop again next time I go through. Yeah. That nice. and uh there's a little place up in I think it's more towards Biloxi called Margaritaville. 
Yeah. It's yeah, like yeah, a yeah. kind of like a I don't know, a lame Dave and Busters, if you will. <laughs> but I mean, we spent a lot of time there because that was about the only spot that wasn't a casino that I would actually go to, unless it was a bonfire on the beach. But you know, of course, don't swim in the water because of the flesh-eating bacteria at the time, and it was just a whole thing. But oh, that, that's right. Yeah, we had the CB. So you had the CB. The CB bowl was in the hotel in the casino. That's right. Yeah. I'm thinking. I'm like, bro. I remember gambling at the CB bowl. That's what got us in trouble too. They got mad that we were causing like a scene. I was like, it's a casino. I just won $8. Leave me the fuck alone. Let me have fun. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. One of them casinos, I about lost my shit one night. I went down there with a few buddies, and I had this uh, this friend, Laura, that was a builder going through my class and everything. But, you know, she, was, she swung the other way, had a girlfriend that was in the Air Force. But guess what Air Force and Navy can't do? They can't check out together. Mm. so i was her lib buddy a few times and you know we went to the casino and then i turned around she'd be gone i knew she was out on a date but i'd just stay there she'd be like hey i'm still getting bah you want some of it to you know just keep yourself busy for the night so she'd give me hundreds of dollars just to go and nice. check out with her so she could go and you know have her date with i can't even remember her name but she was like three foot nothing it was great but <laughs> i was one spin away so she had texted me and she's like, hey, like, we're ready. I'm about three minutes out. I'm like, okay, well, I'll finish up. And I just hit into where I was at $100 flat. Like, if I cashed out, I got a $100 bill. I was like, you know what? I'll take that. So I hit the cash out, and there's a guy standing behind me, sat down in my chair after I got up. And oh, I was man. like, you know, I'm going to watch him for a second. The very first max bet that he did walked out with about 52 large. <laughs> Sucker! <laughs> he knew I was behind him still. Yeah. So I yeah, had to knew. say something. I couldn't be that salty guy that, you know, just walks away all angry and everything. So, like a good guy, I walked up, you know, pat him on the shoulder real quick, and I went to shake his hand and say, Congratulations. Well, he looked at me while scrolling through his phone. You know, lights, sirens, everything was just going mad. This dude's scrolling through like Facebook or something. Just looks at me, he's like, Eh, it's whatever. At that it, point in time, I about went to jail for $52,000. Like, well, it's a lot better than seeing, well, thank you, construction man. Aren't you supposed to be uh, on watch right now? <laughs> uh, yes, chief. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. I like having a name again. It's great. Dude, isn't it, isn't it wild? Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I still... My name is still up there, you know, so I can't really do anything about it. But, yeah, dude, can you imagine? Like, well, I like to I, – I know I'm not supposed to. I know it's like, you know, it's not professional, they say, or it's not like, you know, military bearing. But, like, when I first meet somebody, like, to this day, in the Navy, I mean, obviously right place, right time. I walk up to somebody and I'll say, how you doing? My name is Vinny. Obviously, my last name is on my fucking – my uniform. My rank is right there, so put two and two together if if need be. But first thing I say to somebody is, I'm Vinny. Because we're all human at the end of the day, right? You know what I mean? It's just oh, like, yeah. call myself Harem. Like, what is, nah, I'm yeah, I Vinny. got a confession, like, oh. Vinny. I got a, I got a confession for you, man. I don't oh, know if you're go. ready for this one. Hit me. You did that to me. Right? I did? I was BU3 at the time, I think, when we actually like first started. I think you were actually in one of my fire teams. Um, in the beginning, before we like did the whole reorg situation thing and all that, but you did that thing, you know, you walk up and in uniform, I'm looking down, checking you out, you know, seeing this new guy coming up, like yeah. who the fuck is this guy? And you know, without saying anything else, you just walked up, stuck your hand out, and you're like, hey man, I'm Vinny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. I don't like New Yorkers, man. <laughs> You're like, Who the I, fuck had, is like, <laughs> I got bad experiences with New Yorkers. Like to me, like I don't know, man. Assholes. Like a majority are assholes or have that yep. vibe that it takes you a while to actually get used to it before you can like the person. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of how I felt about you at first. I'm like, oh man, we got another <laughs> one of these fucking, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yo, Northeastern that, that, people with an accent. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it was too, bro. Like I remember that. Like when I first got to five, when I first checked in, I had like my group of friends that like knew me, you know. 
But yeah. I, I heard like talk around that were just like, yo, there's this fucking new kid and he's got like a fake accent. And then that got back to me. I remember I'm like, that. I'm like, yo, how do, why are fucking people talking about it? I don't even fucking know them. And they're like, yeah, this guy has a fake accent. He says he's from New York. His name is this harem kid. And I'm like, wow, a lot of people's got their, my name in their mouth, but not my in their hand. You know what I mean? That's oh, weird. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Dude. That was no, I remember that rumor. I remember yeah. that somebody came yeah. up. They're like, "Man, I heard that guy doesn't even have an accent." I'm like, "Why would he be joking?" With <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, that seems like yeah, a lot yeah. of work. That seems like a lot of work and a lot of practice to be able to get like that. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, look at my ID. It says New York. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, dude, it was so weird. I was like, "Damn!" So like, the military is like high school, right? But then you just overcome and adapt, and people would just. You just tune them out, or I got to the point where I was just like, you got something to fucking say, and then you kind of scare them, because what I've noticed is a lot of people, most, not most, I don't want to say most of people, some of the people that joined the military, they weren't really liked in high school, and they were picked on in high school, so when they come in, they think they're new, and they're badass, and you know, new job knew me and you got to set some people straight but then there's also oh, yeah. a lot of the other people that just come in and they're like dude i just need to get away from fucking iowa <laughs> i'm here facts. dude like facts <laughs> yeah exactly that was dude. me man and i tell you what like i don't regret it one bit like the amount of benefits and you know income or whatever else you can think of like yeah, definitely. You play your cards right in the Navy and just shut your mouth when it needs to be shut and open it when it needs to be open. Like, you'll be fine, man. Yeah, you'll be good, dude. Yeah, I mean, your career worked out good for you. I feel like if you make it to E5 and then you get out at, like, a good time, you know, like, less than 10 years, solid career. Like, you did oh, what yeah. you had to do. Uh, You probably got in trouble, but not too much. And I never you. went up. I never went up and actually got punished or awarded. Wow, really? But, yeah, but when I got out of active, I actually switched over to the whole cell res thing for a little bit. And let me tell you, trying to play CB in the middle of Iowa at some NOSC where half the people don't even know what a CB is, there's no training to be done. There was no funding for projects. You literally went and sat for you know the saturday and sunday sitting in a room didn't have wi-fi didn't have cell service for crap i was going crazy oh. i was trying to find things to do you'd find me sweeping up trash just yeah. to keep myself occupied couldn't just go and you know hide under a desk and take a nap or something for a little while yeah. you had to go to the gym for that when the lights were off and hide behind the machines that was about the only way i could find a place to take a nap that wasn't my car but i did that for I want to say three or four months. Ended up picking up E6 my first time up. So oh, I made wow. I made E4, E5, and E6 all first time up, not studying a single one of them. And all of that, I can thank one of my old chiefs because he told me, he's like, you know, construction men gould or whatever I was at the time. He's like, you're not going to make it if you don't study. You need to study so you can actually, you know, do well on it and get your promotions that you want. I'm one of those guys, Vinny, that if you tell me I can't do something, I'm going <laughs> to make it happen. Yeah. One way or another, I will find a way to do what needs to be done to make it happen. And I did. Good. It Good was, on you. It was great. Yeah. I mean, well, even these tests, like, you know, they give for advancement, right? Everyone kind of knows how it is. Everyone says C's get degrees and when in doubt, Charlie out. But they also, they kind of dumb it down for you. Well, where do they, they'll give you this four answers. It's all multiple choice questions, right? They'll give you four answers where one answer is completely fucking off the wall, not even close. Two answers are exactly the same, and they look very similar, but they're a little different. And then there's the right answer. So, like, just if you can narrow that down, you'll be golden. Just find the one that you like. Just... No fucking way. This is the answer. <laughs> That's what I used every time was process of elimination. If I yeah. read the question, read through the answers, and I didn't know it right off the bat, I'd look at it and be like, all right, which one of y'all is just retarded as shit? And <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how I would start it out. And I would yeah. actually think that in my head. It was 
the the processes that go through my head sometimes you can't even put into words like, yeah <laughs> i mean everyone has their own way of doing everything right and judging oh, yeah. from you being you know first going into the military as a nuke obviously you had some sort of common sense and book smart so you were able to use that and just be like hey this is a dumb test for like, why am I even here at four o'clock in the fucking morning? But well, I, what I will, what I will say is you were a damn good worker and you were a good test taker. And that's hard to find. Usually you find one or the other. You find someone who's really good at their job. Someone who's really good at just like being like a, you know, just like a team player on a project and just doesn't know shit about books or vice versa. Right. And I, I, I'm glad at least you were one of those because the people who are actually on the projects, that's miserable, you know. But it's it, it's the camaraderie, it's the it's the fun times, you know. It's the the pouring rain, and you're like, chief, why we dig in a trench? I I dig six feet, I come back after lunch, and then there's eight feet of water. Like what? What's the fucking point? Like why do I? Why are you talking about Oki again? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean, uh, you know, Okinawa is known for their, uh, oh, their tropical storms. Oh my god, storms. that was bad. Doing those yeah, case band like, projects. I was on that case band for like, I think like a week. And then they, they took me off to go to the Air Force base and do like HVAC there. I was like, thank God I'm a fucking plumber, dude. dude this sucks. <laughs> I was like, this is, this is fun, but nah, not at all, dude. Yeah, you, you Charlie types definitely got like the shit end of the stick on some things. But, eh. What'd you expect? We end you know? up pulling you guys in with it most of the time. You know what they say. Yeah. If you ain't BU, your BU support stuck in the shit with us. Yeah, dude. I mean, everyone's a BU at some point in their career. If you're a CV. I don't know it's how it is. It's because it's the easiest shit. one to do. The BU? Yeah, yeah. So what? Why did, why, I'm surprised they didn't give you like EA or something. Like a, you know, a rate that actually requires like, you know, like 10 fingers. and. Yeah. So <laughs> they... They kind of dumbed it down for me. The available options at that point in time, I believe, were BU, EO, and I think maybe UT. Okay. And I kind of sat down with my advisor, and I'm like, well, what does each one do? Dumb it down for me. Yeah. And she was very to the point with it. She was like, electrician with a gun. Plumber yeah. with a gun. <laughs> yeah. Construction. <laughs> men with a gun with a gun and i was like well hell construction sounds good i don't want to be no fucking plumber yeah yeah it is a shitty job just never trust a plumber who bites their fingernails hey i'm <laughs> just saying though i'm just saying any of them plumbing electrical you know building you get out you're set man i was getting accepted Google for bucks. positions that were like anywhere from i had a few that were like forty five thousand starting all the way up to, I think my highest was like 92,000 starting. Damn. And that's, and that's all in, in that's Iowa. That's in the middle of nowhere, Iowa, yeah. Right. But the 92,000, it was a foreman position at a, uh, it was one of those like concrete cast factories. They make the pre-cast walls and stuff like that. So what my job would have been is simple. You go through, you read the prints, you make sure that your people are getting it built to spec. And then you do the quality check afterwards. Easy day, right? Yeah. Thing is, it was an hour away, and they wanted me to be there from about 4.30 in the morning until about 8.30, 9.30 at night. Yeah, nah, I'm good. If it was local, I probably would have contemplated it a little bit, you know? Not just said, mm -hmm. nope, I ain't doing it. But that's what happened, because, you know, kids, that was one of the main reasons I got out of the Navy, was to be with my family more. Mm -hmm. And... I couldn't justify going into a mad money job, but then not being able to see my kids anymore. If that's the case, I would have just stayed active Navy. Yeah. And then you would have, yeah, no, a hundred percent. You, you get a lot of time. You get a lot of downtime given when you're in the military, you get out to get more downtime just to be close to home and, you know, decide what you want to wear every morning. But if they're going to, if you're going to do all that, then you're going to take it away yourself to drive an out. Now that, that doesn't make sense to me at all. Yeah. Yeah, good thing you didn't do that. So since you didn't do that, what are you currently doing right now? I am actually working for a towing tire and locksmith company. I say that very openly because the <laughs> whole locksmith side of things, that's our boss. 
I can crack a car open. You know, you name a car, I could, I could get it open if you give me enough time for it. Some of them I can have open within 20 seconds. Some of them take me a few minutes. But then, you know, we do that for like emergency services too, or roadside services. You break down on the side of the highway, I'll come out and, you know, change your tire, or give you a jump start, or tell you that you don't need a jump start, you need a tow, and then I'll tow you. Mm-hmm. Or you can go out to accident scenes, which, I mean, some of them are cool, some of them are, you know, you don't say a single word you're out there besides where are the keys, where's it going? Because some of them you show up and it's it's a bad situation. I kind of lucked yeah. out not too long ago. Um, so I do Monday through Friday, pretty much 8 to 5. That is my base hourly schedule. And throughout that time, I will have the shop phone transferred to me. So any call that goes into the shop phone ends up getting forwarded to my cell phone. So if I'm out on the road doing a tow or doing a tire change or something like that or just grabbing lunch, I don't have to answer the actual office phone. It just goes to my phone, which works out great. I don't do weekends usually. And that helped me out because I can't remember what holiday it was. Maybe, honestly, I have no idea what holiday it was. But there was a Beamer, 20, say 2015, just because it's about the same body style, with four teenagers in it, two brothers and two sisters, right? Mm -hmm. All under the age of 18. Well, it was raining. And, I mean, Beamers, it was a 328i or something like that. And, Mm -hmm. you know, they go pretty quick. Well, shouldn't do is do 100 plus miles an hour through a town over a viaduct on a two-lane road. They lost and lost traction, ended up hydroplaning, and got sent into a light pole sideways. When I tell you that the car quite literally folded around the light pole right at the driver's door, it, I don't know if I would have been able to stay in the towing business if I was the one that actually had to go out to that scene. I've done a few of them that you know aren't very pretty, but I've never yeah. done one quite that bad. But yeah, that's not, not even the, like the worst of it, man. Not when the tail lights touch the the headlights. That's that's sad, man. It's crazy, yeah. you know. You, I mean, it, what are you gonna do? You know, like I don't know. You just hope that no one, no one else does it. But yeah, you know, it just happens. makes you think. It makes you think a lot more, you know, about what you know, wearing your seatbelt for starters. We've yep. been out to a bunch of just single car accident scenes where they weren't wearing their seatbelt, and if they had been wearing their seatbelt. You know, yeah, they probably would have gotten banged up a little bit, but they'd still be here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just that type of stuff. It makes you think about things that a lot of people don't really care about. Yeah. Yeah, I I mean, I didn't even think of, like, shit like that. I thought, you know, being a tow truck, like, you know, you you help people. You help people, right? Like, you don't have to respond to, to stuff like that. But now the more I think about it, you're right. Every time there's a bad accident, how are you going to get the car away? Yeah, somebody's got to clean it up. Yeah, somebody's got to do it. Damn, that's shit. Yeah. Well, I I hope that you don't have to go through any anything like that. But we all know it's gonna happen again, and just so uh, you got uh, the sad times like that, right? But during the winter, when it starts snowing and the idiots come out of their crevices or you know pull out their all wheel drive cars. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah you, you I got, had, I had that all-wheel. in all-wheel drive. I don't know why I ended up in the ditch. Yeah, right. well, I mean, you got yeah. an all-wheel drive car. Yeah, sure. But if your tires are shit, it don't matter yeah. how many tires are spinning. Yeah. You're gonna go in the ditch one way or another. So check your <laughs> tires, guys. Check check your check your tires. You check said? your tires. Check your <laughs> check tires. Your, check your tires or or pay the drop fee. Yo, have you, exactly. have you ever watched those shows? Is that like is that like how it is? It's... Sometimes it can be. So you got to remember, yeah. I'm in, you know, Cornfield, Iowa. You go over to Chicago okay. or, you know, down to San Diego or L.A. That's where you usually get more of the excitement. But, I mean, there have been a few instances here where, you know, cops have been involved, of course. And I watched one dude swinging a knife around. It was like an 18, probably not 18, probably about 14-inch knife. Oh, like, shit. I don't know if it was a dagger or just a really long, like, chopping knife or something but he was swinging that around and the cop was just standing there he was kind of keeping an eye on it because he was within reach yeah you know talking to the guy trying to get him calmed down the dude wasn't like swinging at the cop he was just kind of swinging it around but then he must have moved it just right to where the cop was like okay 
I've had enough. <laughs> yeah, Laid yeah. the dude down, cracked, cracked threw the up. knife, <laughs> had him in cuffs within like 20 seconds, and stood him back up. He was like, okay, now we can talk. Yeah. Like so, they, I mean, there have go. been a few times, but, I mean, honestly, like, if I go to hook up your car, if I get hooked up to it, your car is mine until you pay me. If you yeah. want to pay me a little bit there to drop it, that'd be your good. That'd be your best decision. Mm-hmm. But if you start throwing a fit about it, or you know, if I have to call the cops or something, we're gonna have issues. Yeah. And it's gonna be reflected on your tow bill. Yeah, I'm just doing my job. Like, I get right. it. I get it. I'm just doing my job. And if you want to be civil about it, let's be civil about it. But if you want to be an asshole about it, let's be assholes about it. Yep. People, like, I mean, I get it, right? Like, you come out and you see your car halfway in the air, and you're like, "Not right." Like, this is a, well, you parked in 16 parking spots. Like, what you think was gonna happen? You know what I mean? Like, your registration is from 2019. Like, would you, you think you're just gonna get away with this forever? Like, that's not how that works. You know, this is like, well, you know what they say about some... common sense. Oh, it's not that common. Yeah, <laughs> I'll let you. I'll let you. I'll let you finish the one. No, what do they say about common sense? It ain't no, it ain't common, man. <laughs> nah, you nailed nah, it right on all, the head. Man. You, you had it. I bet, I bet you, you thought when you got out of the navy, you'd be like, you know what, it's gonna be good. You know, I'm gonna deal with some, some normal people. Nope. <laughs> I was coming back to this place, man. I knew what I was getting into. There ain't no normal about it. I guess every area has their own normal, and I've kind of adapted <laughs> to this to be my normal. But yeah, yeah, cornfields, uh, rednecks, and what was the third one? Tweakers. Tweakers. Can't yeah, forget that's right. the tweakers. <laughs> nah, I can't forget them. Then they won't forget about you either. They're the best uh-huh. at holding the door open. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so actually, uh-huh. let, let let's kind of transition into that. Let's talk about your your transition from the military into being a civilian. How how did that kind of go for you? Was it smooth sailing? Was it rough? Did you kind of have so, a plan? My plan was to do 20. Okay. But in 2020 when I was out in Sasebo when COVID struck, I was on deployment out there and you were you were on deployment that time too, so you know exactly how it went. Everybody was getting yep. delayed and you know extended. We had what three extensions? That deployment or something like that. Yeah, six but, to twelve months. <laughs> yep, yep. So, so for and, some uh, people, twelve. For most of us, like ten. Yeah, but that one got pretty pretty rough. But I was I was ready to sign an extension. I had actually already gone through all the processes over there and filled out all the paperwork and everything. And well, then one morning I woke up to an email that pretty much changed my life forever. It, I know you've heard like the Dear John letters, Dear John emails or whatever. And, you know, I had kind of heard about them, but I never expected it to happen to me. Well, sure as shit, tax time came around when I was out on deployment, you know, thousands of miles away. Couldn't defend my house or my home or my belongings or even my bank accounts or anything. And, well, that was a mistake. So that happened. Come to find out that she was moving back to Iowa. and. We had one biological kid together, so one biological son on my part, and then the other one was my stepson. I've been around since he was about seven days old, though. So, like, Mm -hmm. I'm dad. He's my son. I'm his dad. Like, that's how it is. That's how it always will be. I don't care what anybody says. But that, on a legal standpoint of things, I had to make a decision whether to split the kids or let the kids be together but separate myself from them. Or, option three, cancel the extension, get my ass back to Iowa as soon as I can. And that's what I ended up doing. So that's where I kind of tried going into the reserves a little bit. Um, but like I said, that wasn't working out for me. No yeah. way in hell would that have ever worked out for me. Yeah, no, but, that, that, that sounds terrible. Yeah, but it, I had a long enough time remaining while in five that I could get all my ducks in a row. So, okay. you know, the whole living arrangement thing, she moved out of the house. I was still on base at the time. I had a five bed, three bath house. Hell, I saw an opportunity. I ain't saying that I let anybody pay rent to live upstairs on base or anything, because, you know, that would be illegal and frowned upon. Don't do it. <laughs> anyway, so it was a good time. I mean, yeah. I didn't have my kids or my family there, but we made do with what we had. I had. 
a good friend that, you know, when we first met each other, we hated each other, but he was the second class that was leading us at our project in Sasebo. I don't know if you remember Dooley or not, but yep. he, uh, yep. he definitely helped me out. We got back to California and he had given up his apartment that he had beforehand and was looking for a place to stay. And I'm like, dude, like, honestly, you'd be doing me a favor if you came to my place. Like, if you came, moved in with me, took up one of the rooms, you know, had somebody else there with me instead of just my dog, which I love my dog to death, but it's just not the same, you know? Yeah, you, so, you, you don't you don't want to be alone. Right. Lily but Lily. He, he moved in, and fuck, we became best friends. It was it was great. Every now and again, I'll send him a picture of my dog just so I know it would make him smile. But Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. I, I do the same shit with McClurg. Because that same time, like when you and Dooley moved in, me and McClurg yeah. moved in. God, that kid fucking loves DoorDash. But I had, a, I had a cat, right? I got a cat. I still have a cat to this day. But, you know, I, I asked McClurg, I was like, yo, do you care if I get a cat? And he was like, nah, dude, I don't care. But if it scratches any of my shit, like, that thing's gone. And I was like, dude, if that thing fucking looks at me wrong, it's gone. I was like, because I, I want an animal. Like, I wanted a dog. But I knew I wasn't going to be able to, like, you know, handle a dog with going on deployment because I still had another deployment coming up and facts and all this other yada yada. So I got this cat, and now I'll send I'll send McClurg a picture of, like, my cat Oscar every now and then. He'll be like, ah, Oscar! <laughs> <laughs> That's about the same reaction I get out of Dooley. He'll yeah, just smile yeah. or send me a picture or something or send me another meme or whatever it yeah. might be. Every now and again, he'll, he'll actually talk. But, I mean, I've been busy. He's been busy. It seems to be like that. That's that's about the one thing I miss from the Navy is, you know, the you don't really think of it much at the time, but like you are essentially one big family. Like yeah. you know each other, you know what, you know, what they're doing that day or how they're doing. You, you see them enough where if they're having an off day, you notice it. And, you know, 99% of the time, at least somebody will, you know, bring it up like, hey, man, like, how you doing? Yeah. And they would actually check up on you. Mm -hmm. But that connection that you build along the way with whether it's your peers or your subordinates or whatever it might be, that lasts. And it makes an impact on you regardless of what you might think at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, that's dope, man. I'm I'm glad to see you're doing good. You're actually not in on-base housing right now. Wait, you, you have your own house in Iowa, right? Yep, I actually yeah. just bought a house using the VA loan back uh, New Year's Day. I took possession in 2023, hey, January year, 1st, 2023, you. man. Hell yeah. That's, that's dope, man. Congratulations. I'm I'm sorry Thank I didn't you. send you like a toaster or something. The house no, we didn't even take a <laughs> picture out front when we got it. Uh, that was so that's exciting. funny. We got it. We got the keys, came in, started painting, man. Completely really? spaced getting a family picture in front of the house, yeah. Oh yeah, oh that's dope. <laughs> that's, that's dope. What did you uh? So you used the VA loan. Was it was that a smooth a smooth like process for you? I kind of like to dive into people who use the VA loan to give us, you know, maybe some lessons learned or tips and tricks or, you know, anything like that that you would be willing to share. So originally, I wasn't too worried about the whole VA loan thing. I mean, at the time, I was making pretty decent change um, at my job because during the winter. You know, you get a bunch of accidents all the time. You're always busy. You don't get much sleep, but you get one hell of a paycheck each week. So I wasn't too worried about it at the time. If I needed to come up with a little bit of money, I probably could have. It would have taken me a lot longer to come up with a down deposit or like a down payment on it. Mm -hmm. But I decided to start reaching out. I wanted to get out. I was uh, living between my mom's house and my grandmother's house. Um, but my mom has dogs that don't like my dog. So my dog would be at my grandma's house all the time. But I didn't want to just leave my dog there. I wanted to spend time with my dog. So I had a bedroom at my grandma's and at my mother's house. And that whole situation just, it was a headache and it was painful. And there was drama that I just didn't want to have any part of. So yeah. got in contact with a couple of different agents over here, uh, like realtors, mm -hmm. and started talking to them like, hey, like what's the process is like, I want to get the ball rolling. And my mom actually referred me to... Um, this lady, Cindy, I believe is her name, that she used for her mortgage. So I called her, yeah, I called her and 
talked to her a little bit and she's like, well, like, unfortunately I can't do anything with VA loans because, you know, I never have. And I don't really, honestly, I don't really want to start doing it because they're not very common around here. I was like, okay, you know, that's fine. Do you know anybody that could? And she's like, well, you'd have to call around and ask. At that point, I was like, you know, I'm just going to find a different realtor. If they take VA loans, cool. If not, I'm just going to go with it anyway. Um, and one of my high school friends is actually a realtor in the area. So I messaged her on Facebook and I was like, hey, you know, I want to use my VA loan, but like, I don't really need to, but I don't have any money for a down payment on the house. And she said, okay, well, you need to message this person. So I sent them an email, and about a day later, he gave me a call, and by God, he saved me. I'm going to say he saved me, because I would have been making a horrible decision to get a regular, you know, 30-year fixed-rate mortgage through some lender versus, you know, the VA. Mm -hmm. So So, you got got your your loan through the VA, correct? In a sense. So let me think about this so I can, all right, so I had my realtor, Sierra, she was awesome, by the way, if anybody ever wants to buy a house in central Iowa, let me know, (laughs) I I got a realtor for you, she, she had, she had me a house within a week, man, like within my budget in Marshalltown of all places, because I got to stay in town for my job so I can be on call when I need to, you know, take a night or, you know, my night guy, I'm always on backup. So whether the night guy or the weekend guy, you know, they go out to like a triple accident scene. We can only do one, maybe two, if you're lucky and talented enough, because our flatbed isn't really meant to work the bed and the wheel lift on the backside, plus the wheel lift's kind of all jacked up. So instead of having, you know, all the deputies on scene or whatever it might be, wait while we do one car at a time, we'll call out backup. So... I'm pretty much on call all the time, except for when I'm actually working. But uh, that's dope. I'm I'm glad I'm glad all that shit worked out for you. I'm glad you actually got your house. You you got a smooth transition out of the Navy because sometimes a lot of people like they just want one thing, right? And that's to get out. Yeah, yeah. Right. Get get that. But now what? Like what what's your plan now? Or why are you getting out? Because your contract's over? Because you hate the military? Yeah, that's great and all, but like. Now what? You so, know, like, back to reality, you know? Right. It was a huge eye-opener, too. So I had 60 days of leave saved up, and I sold every bit of it. So I had that, plus I did a DIY move, got a pod, loaded all my stuff up, shipped it over from California, drove myself, all that good stuff. So I had money coming in from that as well. So I had a decent pocket that I was sitting on by the time, you know, everything was done, and I had... I calculated it out with the current bills I had. I could have done nothing for over a year and Mm -hmm. still had the money to get by. But I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do. So Mm -hmm. I I was going through, you know, looking through jobs. I was trying to get a remote planning and estimating position with a contracting company out in Georgia. Um, You remember Hoxit? UT1 type? UT1 Hoxit? No. Old salty salty navy guy man he'd been in for i think he retired at like 21 maybe right at 20 but from his saltiness you'd think he'd been in a whole lot more but he uh left probably six months before i did went over already had the position in georgia and he and i were talking i would i would love to work for him again work for him in the navy i'll work for him out of the navy doing the same thing pretty much um but that ended up falling through and at that point I didn't know what the hell I was going to do, man. I would sit there scrolling through jobs online, you know, going on to different websites, trying to find something that might work, you know, driving around town to see if I see any, uh, you know, opening positions or anything like that in the windows. And I was driving back out to my mom's house and I was driving past where I work now, uh, Larry's Towing and Tire. And Mm -hmm. right there on the way to my mom's house, literally like a mile away. I saw it and I was like, you know, I told that guy back when I was 15 that I was going to work for him one day. <laughs> so I stopped in and I was, I was looking for old man Larry. Well, he retired about a year before I actually walked into the shop looking for a job, but his son Jason 
he and I go way back. When I first started driving, I had POS cars that were breaking down or getting flat tires. Or you know, I was in the shop about once a week, once every two weeks for random things or calling them up for a tow. So I would just start hanging out there for a while. And, you know, I'd get bored at home when I was 14. I would just hop in my car, drive the mile into the shop, hang out with them. But I was thinking about it. I was like, you know. I told him that I was going to work for him one day, and I haven't worked for him yet. So I walked in there, and I'm like, hey, how's it going? I told you I was going to work for you one day. How about now? He's like, all right, here you go. Sign this and, you know, fill it out. I used old man Larry, his dad, as my first reference on the application. <laughs> I already knew I had the job. Like, yeah, he... He needed help at the time because he was down a guy, and I hopped in and filled the role, and it's been there since. I wasn't yeah, originally man. planning on staying. Originally, it was just going to be a you know temporary until I find something to make a career out of. Mm -hmm. But then when the disability money started coming in, and I saw that I had a bit of a foundation, a little bit more leeway as far as finances goes, mm -hmm. I was like, you know. I could see myself doing this for a while. And then the winter money started coming in. I was like, oh, I'm definitely staying. It <laughs> yeah. was no brainer. Yeah, the winter money is nice when you pull people out of ditches. And uh, at least you get to sit in the warm truck. I've always like been curious about like that show, like the ice road, tr oh, excuse me, like the ice road truckers and stuff. That's you. Oh, I'm yeah. dead ass talking to one right now. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would never do that type of shit. I like and, me some concrete, pavement, you know, asphalt, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. I ain't driving on any ice, but especially nah, over you, a big frozen lake like that, no. Nah, I'm good. I'm good. Hey, you you stay away from those, all right? Oh, I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> hey, I've hey, been Nick. fancying me a river, a river winch out, though. That would be fun. You said, you said who? I've been fancying myself a river winch out. So I've done my very first day on the job, right? Yeah. Very first day. Hadn't even gotten to lunchtime yet. My boss was telling me about some of the crazy toes that he'd done. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah, you know, one time we had to pull a car out of the pond there in town. And mind you, it was, you know, mid-November. So it was starting to get a little chilly. Mm -hmm. His phone rings. Marshall County Dispatch. Oh, cool. We got something, right? He looks at me halfway through the phone call and he's like, oh. The Martha Allen mm -hmm. Tide Pond. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So we get out there. There's this 20, I think a 22 Subaru Outback or something like that in the middle of this pond. <laughs> the boss is over there. My tire guy's over there. I'm standing right here. Right? I'm looking around. We're all kind of looking around like, all right, who's going in the water? You. Well, I live closest to town, and it was my very first day on the job, so I got to yeah. go for a swim. Yeah. That's kind of, that's kind of, I mean, I mean, you knew it was coming. You were like, oh, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, you're the, you're the boss, so you're not going in. Yep. And, and you've been here for two days. I've been here for one, so I guess I'm going in. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much how it went down, man. But I, I took myself a nice long shower afterwards at my house. And yeah, it was fun. I'd do it again. <laughs> Good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're having fun, man. I, I'm glad your, your time in service was uh, admirable. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you, you finished honorably. I'm glad your life is going the way that you planned and the way you want it to go now, man. I, I, I wish nothing but the best for you. I Truly. appreciate that. Same goes to you, man. That day that you get out, we got to have a party. I will fly <laughs> out to wherever you are. Just tell uh, me when ahead of time so I can start saving a dollar here, a dollar there, you know, because it's going to be a time. Hey, it didn't. It hasn't snowed yet, but when it does, you bet you better rake in that money and pull yourself to Jersey. All right. Oh, I, I got will. some. I, I got some. I, I think I'll, I'll drive my car into a ditch. I'll just put a, a brick on the gas pedal and drive it. And I'm like, yo, uh, yeah, you guys got a, a tow truck? I need. He's like, yeah. Wait, where are you? Jersey, sir. You know we're in <laughs> Iowa, right? Yeah, it's fine. Just I got AAA. You can tell tell Nick to come down here. <laughs> Hey, be a if I had the time track. and money, I would bring my own pickup and pull you out, Vinny. I guarantee <laughs> I, I'd probably be able to do it. 
I appreciate that. I'm sure you would too. I wouldn't know what the fuck I was doing. I'm just like, all right, honey, fuck it. We're just gonna get a new car. <laughs> nah, man. Hey, before I let you go, do you have anything for me? Is there any questions for me or anything that you want to talk about that I didn't uh, ask you? So one thing I would like to hit on, we kind of went back to the whole why I got out of the Navy thing because of the whole Dear John email and all that situation. That was some very dark times. You can ask anybody who was on that deployment with me. I was an absolute mess. I couldn't see the days pass. Like, I didn't see a future. I was damn near ready to just let it all go and not have to worry about anything. You know what I mean? And something just kept pushing me. And I, I, 100%, hands down, it was my kids. So for those that are, you know, either going through the same situation whether you have kids or not, I don't care. No matter what the bad situation is, take a second, learn from it, you know, tell yourself the whole, oh, I'm never doing that again, just like you would after drinking too much vodka on a Saturday night, and then you end up going back to it again anyway. But keep your heads up, because regardless of how dark it might seem at the time, eventually, as long as you actually stick with your goals of bettering yourself and surviving the situation mm -hmm. stick to it it'll be worth it in the end i didn't think i'd have what i have now and i have never been more happy man i got a house the kids you know i'm still on oh, well not still but i'm on good terms with the ex-wife there was obviously a while there where it was very bad terms but we worked through that you know, I got a nice car, got a nice house, got a nice girlfriend and kids. I'm content. So my advice is just keep your head up and keep putting your left foot in front of your right until you look up one day and it's sunny again. I love that, dude. That, that's great, man. That's great. For real, for real. It's, it, it's shit like that. Like, I hope. I'm, you're not the only one who went through some shit like that, right? I, I don't hope that. Right. I'm, I'm just continuing my sentence. But, you know, there's people out there who are probably going through some shit like that. Or they haven't gotten to it yet, but it, it, it might hit them, you know? And, and it's good to know that you yourself went through some shit like that and everything will be okay, man. That's it's one of the reasons why I love doing episodes, why I love talking to people. It's just so people can listen and be like, yay, this dude from Iowa never would have fucking met him in my life no idea who the hell he is but me and him are very similar in what the fuck's going on in our life and i'm glad he shared his story because now it's given me some insight into me and mine so thank you for that bro i appreciate you oh absolutely man anytime anytime you got questions or you want my input on something i'm not but a phone call away but <laughs> hell yeah dude i appreciate you bro thank you so much for coming out Thank you so much for sharing your story, bro. It's been honestly a true pleasure. Oh, absolutely, man. Hell yeah. It's been a, it's been a joy. <laughs> Until next time, guys. Views presented are right, those of the speaker and the guest do not necessarily represent the views of the Department of Defense or its components. Neither the Department of Defense or its components bears any responsibility for the accuracy, legality, or content of the views discussed on this podcast.